Bonjour, everyone. Hi. Welcome to Communications from Home. I'm your host, Neshi Lokatz, with my special guest, Polly Jola Bay. Yeah, we're going to be um, finishing up the conversation that we had earlier today called... Um, what was it called? <laughs> there we go. The truth, the truth of a multi-dimensional being. <clears throat> yeah, we, we've had a long afternoon. <laughs> it's been, we're kind of slap happy. Just a little bit. Hi, Rob. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> it's been such a good time spending time with Polly Joe and hitting all kinds of topics and doing some work together and that sort of thing. And so um, <clears throat> when we chose this topic about the multidimensional being, um, we wanted to, to share about the things that we have noticed in our lives that might be helpful to you. And if you have some tips or something that you want to share, just go ahead and put, put them down below and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll read them out loud and, and uh, maybe have even a deeper conversation. That's during the first half of the show. <clears throat> the second half is um, Polly Jo is going to be doing a guided meditation for us um, like she would normally do during her chakra session show at noon. Um, but we went all the way through. We talked all, the whole hour. We did. <clears throat> we did. And so uh, we promised that tonight you're going to be getting the meditation um, about being a multidimensional being. <clears throat> and I have to slow down to say that because, because it is 7 o'clock at night. Hang on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put that up so everybody knows who we are and what we're doing here. And we're just going to say hi to a couple people here. There's Rob. Hi, Rob. Good to have you here. <laughs> what do you see, Nashi? Well, we're going to be talking about that, too. <laughs> Lisa, hello, Lisa. We're going to get to your question that you left in the comments um, in chakra sessions, okay? Put it again over here. Oh, just great. Good. good. Thank you for doing that. Hey, Julie Shumway Hill. It's good to have you here. Yay. Julie was with us over the weekend for Polly Joe's class, Awakening Your True Potential. And I think is that what also what is in the empowerment weekends? That's that's it's the same <laughs> content as the empowerment weekends, yeah, that I do for my school. And it, it certainly is that. Um, it is th those weekends are life changing. Yes, they're meant to be. Yeah, yeah, because we get to go as deep as you're willing to go. And let me tell you, it was a big weekend. A lot of good work mm -hmm. got done this weekend, and. Lisa, she's going to, we're going to be answering that in just a second. Jocelyn, hello, Jocelyn. It's good to have you here. And look, Brenda's here too. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Brenda. And um, Rob says, I missed today's broadcast again. Mexico servers are down. Well, it's a good thing they have you to help out. Mm -hmm. And Tina's here too. Hi, Tina. Good to have you here. And Edward, you're here. He says, hi, Neshi and Polly hi. Joe. Just just in home today. Happy birthday! Oh my goodness! Happy birthday! Did you celebrate? I hope you did. I hope you had a good birthday. That's right, Brenda. Everybody let let uh, Edward know about a happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for doing that, Brenda. Now, <clears throat> here's the thing, right? Is um, this is what we normally would be asking all of you to do, and that is to. Um, spread the word around that you're watching this live stream show, right? Um, and we're asking you, inviting you to do that as well. I just finished up doing that, sending it over to my uh, news feed. I sent it over to Polly Joe's news feed and over to a couple of the closed groups. But we invite you to do the same thing. And here's the reason why. There's two reasons, okay? Number one is that whenever we find something that helps us along our spiritual journey, um, I think that it's a light workers, uh, energy workers, civic duty to share it because if it was helpful to you, it's going to be helpful to someone else. And it's kind of like paying it forward. Right. Um, and so just being kind to someone else. Now, the second one is whether you know, Facebook, that elusive creature, every time we try to figure it out, we think we have it figured out, they change something. <clears throat> and one of the things they changed is the logarithms again. And so um, if you could just even share it with just one friend, that's really, really helpful to help us in the news feed more often, right, to appear there. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. And thank you, listen, 
Hello, Christine. Hey, thank Christine. you for doing that for us. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank, thank you so you, much. Thank you. Um, and so tonight's show is all about being a multidimensional being. And in uh, Polly Joe's show this, this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you were at, um, we did talk a bit about um, what's it like? How do you know? And so Polly Joe, if you could, if you could give us just a, um, a definition of what is a multidimensional being? She's not going to do it. I'm, I'm like, how nice of you to give me the easy stuff. <laughs> My inner child is really active. So um, I'll, I will sort of apologize for that. Um, so for, for me, um, a multidimensional being is someone who is able to access the energy, um, the vibration, and the frequency of more than one dimension at a time. Um, and from the chakra perspective, it means you're living your life um, in more than one chakra. Um, you're not stuck in just your survival body, but you are moving through to access higher levels or fuller levels, as my team calls them, of awareness and consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and listening to that definition, you know, years ago, years ago, I want to say probably maybe 15, 20 years ago, <clears throat> or even more, um, many of us were really working very diligently on what we would call today our upper chakras from our heart on up, yes. right? Yeah. And um, working on that ascension piece, right? And I have to say that in the last few years that that has kind of flipped around a bit mm -hmm. um, to be able to, to work on healing the lower chakras. And here's the big question. Why would we want to do that when we spent so much time healing the upper chakras? Well, um, the, the lower chakras are really our foundation, our connection to the earth plane. Um, so it's kind of like you can't build a house on a rocky foundation. Um, so if you don't take care of, you know, those cracks and holes and, and, uh, leaky floorboards, um, there's not, it doesn't matter how much work you did in the upper, in the upper levels, you may have marble countertops and, you know, you know, crystal bathtubs, but, uh, if you don't have a good foundation for them to lay on, uh, the whole house is going to come tumbling down. Mm -hmm. Um, and when you don't work on the, the lower chakras, our survival body, um, that fear energy is vibrating um, through your base. It's kind of like creating mini earthquakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's when you see um, actually quite a bit of mental illness when you only work on the uppers and don't work on the lowers. Right. Right. And so when we're, <clears throat> when we are integrated, right, mm -hmm. meaning that we have worked on the upper and the lower. Mm -hmm. um, we have more access to not only to our gifts, but also to our intuition. Mm -hmm. And the intuition doesn't necessarily only come through the third eye. No, big time. No, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> right. Because, That's the first level of intuition. Right. right. And so as a multidimensional being, we get to um, bring in a lot more information into our bodies so that we can use that information for our soul growth, right? Um, and so as a multidimensional being, we talked about this earlier today, yeah. um, why it's important to be grounded, not just to this earth plane, but to others as well. Right. right. You know, um, it's, it's like having um, a ship anchored. Because mm -hmm. um, when a ship is anchored, you can really, um, you're in control of of the movement of the boat um, when you're just sitting on the water the water's in control mm -hmm. um, when you have your anchor you're in control so um especially because we're accessing uh, many levels of consciousness and sometimes we're unaware of that um we start slipping and sliding um energetically which creates problems that can cause dizziness and the inability to focus stay on mm -hmm. task 
Um, you may be tripping a lot of clumsy energy mm -hmm. um, and forgetfulness. And no, it's not old age all the time. You know, it's it's and even with that, you know, if, if you can ground your energy, it will um, fully in each um, dimension that you move through, then um, you are able to really focus and be aware. Mm -hmm. So the whole point is that. Um, grounding lets you be aware of your surroundings, your environment, your life, um, and you can have your life happen for you, not right. to you. I like that one. Mm -hmm. I like that one. We're just going to say hi to a couple people here. Hi, Karen. Hi. Good to have you here. And um, I just saw another one here. Mm, thank you, Lisa. <laughs> thank you for sprinkling. Oh, here it is. Yay, Carol says, I'm she's back. back. <laughs> Carol Yay. Was, uh, was uh, with us during the earlier show. And here's one from Jocelyn. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And there's all sorts of, yeah. If you, under bright light, yeah, it's it's something. It's it's called galaxy hair. Um, and it, it actually is funny because it really feels like it fits me. <laughs> it does too. And it really is pretty in the sunlight mm. um, because you can actually see more of the lavender too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Oh, and Marie. Marie. Marie's here too. Hi, Marie. She Good survived the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Woohoo. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> that multidimensional being, we're going to answer Lisa's question. I'm going to scroll yes. back up here. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. Lisa asked a really good question. Let me turn off that crawler though, because it's kind of irritating. Here we go. All right. So Lisa's asking, what does it mean when you wake up with your whole body vibrating? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to do this one? Yeah. <laughs> um, so actually, it's interesting because when I was thinking about it afterwards, I'm like, there's probably people who are vibrating before they go to bed because that's me. Mm -hmm. um, and then some people who vibrate on their way waking up. So I'll answer the waking up first, but I'll answer the, the falling asleep one because there's a lot of people who have those leg tremors, right? right. Um, so the when you wake up with your whole body vibrating, I like to think of it as the space shuttle coming back into the atmosphere, mm -hmm. Right. So as it's coming in, you're seeing the astronauts <laughs> shaking mm -hmm. um, from the reentry. Um, and that usually means that um, your container is a little tiny um, because you're not just sort of sliding back in. Um, you're getting bumped around by the energy as you're reentering. Mm -hmm. Um, so one of the things that can really help with that is, and this is true for everybody, um, is if you ground your energy in each dimension before you go to bed. And we talked about that early to, earlier today, mm -hmm. but it's really key and releasing all the energy that you picked up during the day. Mm -hmm. That's another one because then you're not shaking everybody else's junk off of you. Um, and when it's going to sleep, it's you're entering a more um, a higher vibrational state as you start to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. um, when the brain starts to move in um, to the theta waves, mm -hmm. um, you your whole body goes into that fuller place, that fuller dimension. Um, and so for some people, it activates um, tremors. Um, which is fear that needs to fall off of your body because mm -hmm. um, it can't match that vibration for sleep. So it's also the, the startle response that a number of people have mm -hmm. um, when they awake from post-traumatic stress, like yeah. night terrors and things like that, when you, when you have that jerking mm -hmm. reaction. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for those of you who have had infants, that startle response is natural in all humans it's our way of um shaking off energy that isn't ours right right you know and actually lisa i've never experienced the the vibrating um coming coming back in <laughs> coming back in what i normally experience is like a whooshing 
sound, mm -hmm. a wishing sound. Yeah. And the feeling of, um, you know, like when you're riding a roller coaster or when you're driving along the road and it's kind of um, hilly and it feels like you're, you've done this dip and you have that, that sensation of falling, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that that's mine. I don't necessarily vibrate, but I have the sensation of that coming in, that dip, and then the whooshing sound. And what I learned about that whooshing sound is the, the literally the air as I'm coming back into the body. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we're passing through Grandmother Earth's aura. Mm -hmm. So if you think about the fact that we're going through her aura, you know, we've been out of her aura and we're coming back through, we're passing through her layers. Um, and um, there was something else I was going to say about the, the whoosh. Oh, um, I found that from the vibrating place, um, the, the, like the next step from the vibrating before you get to the whoosh, <laughs> <laughs> sounds kind of strange, but there we have it, um, is that sensation you have when you were a kid and you would swing really high and then you'd almost like jump off the seat where the swing would start to come back down and you were still up. And then you kind of like hit the swing and come back. Um, that's that's the sensation that happens right before the whoosh. Yeah. So you go from the vibrating to the the jumping swing feeling mm -hmm. to the to the whoosh. Mm -hmm. So you'll know you're on the right track. <laughs> so, so if you get the wish, you know you're coming back into your body. You're actually it's a it's a pretty good landing. It is a good yeah, landing. A nice, nice gentle one. A nice gentle one. I've had those maybe not so quite gentle, but you know. Yeah, it happens. Sometimes we have a rough driver. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, uh, Lisa, question. for that for that question. And look, Jackie's here too. She says finally Hi. able to catch the show. So Woo. glad you're here. Here, and Andrea is saying, I love this topic. I'm currently reading an author uh, Arthur Finley, Finley book mm. that I feel follows along this topic. Yeah, yeah you're gonna have to let us know how well you like that one. I'm, okay. Can we put up Ed's comment for a second? Sure. I used to have hair in this galaxy. That <laughs> <laughs> My husband would say that too. <laughs> he used to have hair in this galaxy. It's gone into another dimension at the moment. <laughs> well, here, that's actually a pretty good question. Yeah. Right. Is that, do we, do we look the same when we're in the, in another dimension? No. no. Because we're bright lights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we don't necessarily, because our physical body, this body is here in this dimension, resting, sleeping mm -hmm. at night. At so night. what happens during the daytime when your, your, your physical body is in the awake state, mm -hmm. right? And you are a multidimensional being all the way around the clock. It doesn't stop. Right. Yeah. So we're still that bright light. Yeah. In that other dimension. We are. So when you have your hair done, <laughs> do you get to take that with you? <laughs> I'm setting the intention that I am. <laughs> and maybe I brought the hair color back from another dimension Ooh. because it, Ooh, I liked it yeah, better it. than the one I had in this dimension. I that's think that's it. the truth. That's it. I really do. That's it. Mm -hmm. You manifested someone who could actually recreate it here. Mm-hmm. Because she's like very one. intuitive, very yeah, psychic. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, that one's the good one. We'll, we'll stay with that one. All right. And Kimberly is saying, very interesting. Sometimes I jump and have done out of sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think we've all experienced that at yeah. some time. Yep. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yep. And falling. Mm -hmm. A jolt up in bed. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You got it, Andrea. All right. So how do you ground in every dimension? Another good question. Mm hmm We'll do it in the meditation. <laughs> so then you'll have a, a sense. But but it's really all about intention. Mm -hmm. You know, so as you you set the grounding energy, you want to set the grounding energy here first, because this is where our physical body is. So it's really important to get to get really tuned into being grounded in this dimension. And then once you do that, um, you invite the energy to ground in each and every other dimension. Um, and I sense that grounding from my heart. 
Mm -hmm. Um, You know, sometimes I sense it from my central gateway when my soul chakras are activated, um, but 90% of the time it's happening through my heart. Um, And I tend to invite my heart and my transcendental heart, which is your high heart, Mm -hmm. um, to work together. Like I almost create a little grounding cord between the two hearts. Right. Um, And then when I have a grounding cord between the two hearts, then I sort of send the spider web of grounding cords in each direction. Okay. Dimension. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, And the thing is, is that it is through the intention. It's in the intention. Um, So in the old days, like two years ago, we were only grounding to this earth plane right? Mm -hmm. Sending, and we have all done it, you know, sending, no matter what technique you used, you were sending your roots down into grandmother earth in this reality. Mm -hmm. Um, And not intentionally, consciously doing that through any other reality that you are a part of. Right? Right. And then it's also, you know, as part of that, sending your grounding cord, um, to the center of creator too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, your original roots, <laughs> yeah. your current roots through to your original roots mm-hmm. um, so that, you know, you're on your own trajectory. Right. And so you're literally grounding both down and, and up. Right. And so those of you who studied with me for um, Awakening Illuminated Heart um, and knowing about the crystalline tube, and how universal energy flows down through the tube and then up through the tube, Mm -hmm. that's exactly what we're doing. And it's going through um, the tiny space of your heart. Yep. Yeah. So it's, there's lots of different ways to ground and it really is in the intention. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Here's Marie. Marie is saying, (laughs) I get those often. I love that. I always call those cold chills or other people say someone's walking over your grave but totally makes sense now. Yeah, the, the cold chills, there can also be another, can I tell them what the other thing can be about that? Yes. yes. Um, so sometimes, um, my students know this, the cold chills sometimes is when we're working on, um, we're in part of our soul lesson where we're also working on energy that's connected to um, past incarnations. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I like to think of it as when when we have that chill of energy as we're, we're working on something um, that it's come a long way to get to us to heal. That's right. That's and right. so we get an opportunity to heal um, dimensionally, mm-hmm. not just in this time period. Right. Right. Time. 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 You realize that us two-leggeds. We talked about this earlier today Mm -hmm. and how us two-leggeds, we can complicate the most simplest things. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we did to ourselves was when um, there was a creation of measuring time and space. Yeah, Edward. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Here you go, Edward. He says, I've never never truly grasped 3D time and always think that time zones are just agreed consensus. I've mm-hmm. always I always feel like I got my own internal time zone. Yes. Yes. You know why, Edward? This is what I believe anyway, mm-hmm. is that um, time is sphere, spherical. In other words, it's a circle. And that the present time is always happening right now. There is no past, there is no future. It's all right here. Mm-hmm. And that our soul remembers that and that we sense, feel, see spherically. Mm-hmm. And that when we are grounded, centered and protected, um, we can relax into that. Yeah. Right. Um, we're not hyper vigilant. Yeah. Right. And so, um, yeah, that time thing. And we were, we were talking about expanding and, and contracting time in the first half of the show um, during Shaka sessions. So if you haven't seen that particular replay um, after the show, I'll put the link here and the link to this one there Mm -hmm. so that whoever wants it, you guys can see the whole whole entire two hours. 
Yeah. Okay. And then also Andrea is saying, so true. I've never grounded in a web before. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at the time. How much time do you think you're going to need for the about 20 minutes, about 20 minutes, 15 maybe. Okay. So I think, um, what we're going to do, right, here we go. <laughs> time zones are consensus. Yep. The time at the South pole is New Zealand time because they supply out of uh, Christ Church. I see. Yep. Yeah. Lisa saying, man, the, the learning is never <laughs> done. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the thing is, Lisa, is that when the learning is done, we're moving on to the next experience. Our soul is, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, yeah we, we're every, every moment that we're here. Stretch, yeah. grow, stretch, Let's grow. grow. <laughs> yeah. Get uncomfortable. Yep. Then get comfortable. Then get uncomfortable. <laughs> Yep. It's in the stretch. Right? Yeah. All right. So I think what we're going to do, guys, is um, Polly Joe needs about 20 minutes or so uh, for the meditation. I think we're going to do the meditation now. And so that we have a few minutes, you know, like 10 minutes or so um, at the at the back end so that we have another discussion about the meditation and sure. what you experienced. Sure. OK, so get comfortable. Why don't you let them know what they need? And yeah. Um, so, you know, if, if any of you have not done a meditation with me before, um, you know, moving out of the way, dear. I'm, I'm just moving just slightly, slightly <laughs> so that you have the full camera. She's uh, she's in this this place. Um, you, if you saw us earlier today, when we're too close together, <laughs> it gets really hot, and the camera's not so happy. <laughs> Um, so to do the meditation, um, I, I have a large field when we do meditation. Um, so yeah, it's sometimes better to be out of the direct line of fire. Um, so if you haven't done meditation with me before, um, the, the, the little key pieces to know is that it's a channeled meditation. So it's coming through me, the divine's coming through me, um, and as we're doing it, I'm going to be clearing energy for the entire group. So when I'm clearing energy for the entire group, um, I may make like little burping noises. Um, I'm hoping I won't squawk, but you know, the squawking noise um, happens when there's some really big medicine that needs to get moved. Um, so that's very normal. So for you, you wanna get super comfortable. Um, it doesn't matter if you're sitting or laying down um, or walking. This one might be a little tough walking because, um, yeah, you're not going to just be here. So if you could stop, um, stop, drop and roll. <laughs> um, I think it's better if you do this particular meditation um, sitting or laying down. OK, and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to start by grounding your own energy and um, as we said before, there's multiple ways to do that. I really encourage you to um, feel the connection first to your body. And I often do that by just feeling my muscles and my bones in my body. I feel gravity as it pushes down on me. Right now I'm feeling the weight of my body in the chair and the connection of my feet to the floor. And I invite you to take a couple of deep breaths because as we talked about earlier, we want to let our full spirit in. So breathe in really deep and blow out. So when we do that, we're making room in our heart for spirit to enter. And you can do a couple more of those breaths. And don't be afraid to make noise as you blow the air out. It gives it voice, but it also opens the pathways. Now you can imagine that your tailbone or your root chakra connected to the tailbone of the base of your spine. 
creates a giant cord of connection. You can picture your Hara line or your crystalline tube and how it tunnels through the ground all the way to the center of the earth, back to that molten lava center. Some people visualize their underneath their feet that there are roots that go deep and wide beneath the earth, kind of like a giant tree. And then other people, you may need to use your heart to ground. So in the heart grounding, just imagine the heart connecting to the third chakra, to the second chakra, and the first chakra, all the way down to the ground. And now in our heart, we're also going to connect to the divine, to all that is oneness, consciousness, back to the very center of creation energy. And you may experience that going up through the top of the crystalline tube. You may feel the web of connection to your heart going up to creator. And then I also invite our energy to ground in each and every dimension, direction, vibration, and frequency that we're able to connect to in this moment. So for some of you, you may start to feel that web of connection. And so I'm going to invite the divine energy to open and expand our Hara line, our crystalline tube, so that it can hold a little more energy, a little more flow. So you can just imagine it stretching, opening and expanding. And you may experience that sensation at the crown or at the third eye, maybe in your throat, in your heart, in your solar plexus. In your sacral. at the first chakra, that root. Maybe you'll sense it as it goes by your legs or through your legs. You may notice the energy around you is brighter. You may hear buzzing or talking. So right now we're anchored in our energy right here in this space and time and where our energy was when we began. And we're just going to gently slide our energy in frequency and vibration For some of you, this may feel up. For some of you, this may be experienced as a widening. We're going to stop right here for a moment. We're going to make sure that our aura is full and bright, surrounding and protecting us in this bubble of infinite love and infinite light, that our spiritual team is fully present, guiding and assisting us. 
and the reminder to ourselves and our inner children that this healing meditation is for the good of all and harm to none. And now we're gently going to open and expand just a tiny bit more. Stretch and grow. You might notice places where your body can sense it and feel it. it Maybe hurting in your back or your neck. You may feel squeezing at the temples or pressure at the top of your head. In any place where you feel discomfort, we're going to invite the divine energy to come in and melt away whatever energy is resisting our fullness. We don't need to know what that energy is, just simply in this moment releasing any pain or tightness it may be causing. Even if that pain is pain that you had when we started the meditation, you do not have to return with that pain. You can release it if you simply choose it in this moment, in this fuller vibration. And in this space, we're going to open our pathways of communicating with our spiritual team, with the divine, so that we can have clarity, fuller, expanded, intuitive information, connection to our knowing and our wisdom. Yeah. And the ability to connect to an even fuller version of unconditional love. And allowing that unconditional love to fill our heart chakras so that they can stretch and hold even more love, even more compassion and empathy. And just take a moment to imagine that energy radiating out for others to sense and feel and experience all over Grandmother Earth. Sending ripples of unconditional love to those in need. And feeling in this moment our integrity, our harmony with ourselves and the safety and security that our inner child can experience as we are in this vibration. And now we are gently going to bring our energy back to our original grounding cords. So you may feel the energy, the light dim a little bit. That's not your light dimming, that's the energy around. And then take a moment to feel your physical body at this moment. Can you feel your feet, your fingers, your hips, your ribs? Can you feel the clothes on your body? And we're going to release any excess energy that we don't need at this moment down that grounding cord 
into the earth plane or up to creator, wherever it feels most needed. And we're going to take a few deep breaths and with each deep breath, we're going to make a sound to blow out the energy because the vibration of the sound will help us find our current physical body location. So take a deep breath in, blow out. Let's try that again. Breathe in and sound out. Yeah. Good. One more. Breathe in. And yeah. Nice. Thank you. So I invite you to start to um, wiggle your fingers, your toes, rub your hands together, your feet on the floor, um, whatever you need. Um, uh, hi, Julie. Glad to have you here. How you guys doing from your little trip? <laughs> Back into the frame. Mm. Welcome back, Miss yeah, Nashi. Yeah, that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> it was really good. Um, so if you could let us know by making a comment, you know, just checking in on you guys, make sure you're you're back into awake, awake moments. You're back yeah. here and you're ready to go. Yeah. And Julie arrived. Hello, Julie. Yay! <laughs> yeah, you have that broken toe. Connie's here too. Hey Connie. Nice, nice. <laughs> it's kind of a reading, I think, they yeah. gave me. Oh, okay. All right. So that was really good. Mm. Um, certainly felt that, um, I don't even know what to call it. Is there a word for it? Because it wasn't floaty. Mm -mm. But you definitely could sense the the being in more, more than one place. Mm. Yeah. yeah, there's a lightness to the energy. Um, and I'm sure some of you have done journey work to the angelic realm and things like that. Um, and depending on who you did it with, you might have had that out of body experience, but sometimes the reintegration, mm -hmm. as some of us were talking about, isn't so great because you're not grounded in in that dimension and this dimension. But when you're grounded in in all the dimensions you can access, then when you go visit one, um, it's kind of like taking an elevator. Mm. So you can feel it moving. Yeah. But you still have that sense of, you know, there's still ground underneath your feet. Mm -hmm. A flow of anything. Stable. Mm -hmm. Stable. Lisa's, Lisa's saying she's tingly. Yay. Yay. Jocelyn's back. Tingly is really good. That means energy that um, is is awakening um, that was blocked. So that's really awesome. That's good. Andrea says, awesome. Nice. Rob is back. Yeah. Uh, Edward said, I wanted to stay. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, there's times when it's hard to come back. Mm -hmm. um, and I get that. Um but that's one of the te the things that I teach um, as part of my work. You know, we talk about coping mechanisms um, and avoidance is a big one. Um, escapism. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's nice to hang out in those realms. But um, when you really um, call in your multidimensional being, you can have that here a in a wide awake state. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And Julie is saying, really felt that pressure in my solar plexus and up to my heart. Yeah. Um, and that's really popular because um, the pressure in the solar plexus is really the ego self freaking out that we're, we're leaving home or it thinks we're leaving home. It doesn't realize that we're taking them with us. Yeah. Um, and then then the, the energy going to the heart is like it's inviting the ego self to to step up into 
um, the next level that it's mm -hmm. it can the next frequency. So sometimes, you know, that first step can be can be the hardest step. And then after that, they're easier. Mm -hmm. um, but for those of you who experience heartburn, it's because you're trying to move up dimensionally. Ah, yeah. it's good to know. Mm -hmm. uh, Rabbi is saying it felt like a low frequency, perfect interval, a fifth, actually. Um, well, it depended on who you were and where you started. Yeah. Um, cause, um, we were in 17 different dimensions at that moment. Um, so because we were taking everybody up kind of like an octave. Mm -hmm. Um, and so in that, so it's, it was just a little ride. I didn't take you for the crazy, you know, nosebleed roller coaster, mm -hmm. um, because that isn't helpful for training you to be able to to feel it. So I'm glad you, you had a sense of the dimension for yourself, Rob. That's great. Really. And because at a soul level, at our soul, we already know, we, we remember what that feels like. And what we're doing is um, getting our conscious mind to say, Oh yeah, that I remember that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. All right. So Kimberly expansion, uh, which was wonderful. Yes. Um, Karen, Karen Blumish. Hi, Karen. Felt uh, a shot through my feet, made them twitch. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, you probably had there. We have some secondary chakras at the bottoms of your feet. Um, so um, as part of the clearing, you know, um, as I was clearing energy, um, you know, there were a number of people who had some root chakra stuff that released. Um, and so you can imagine like, um, unclogging a drain and how the water then kind of flows through. So yeah, yeah there's that wishing. There's again. that wishing. Yeah. All right. And Marie says, woo, woo. First time I've been able to do while sitting without back hurting. Yay! That was fun. You did some good. You some did good some work, work this, this weekend. weekend. Julie is saying, uh, now I'm belching. Uh, I'm still clearing. Yes. Well, you know, because your energy wants to be in that, that fuller place and it, it can sense all the things that are holding you back from it. Mm -hmm. So um, you'll, you may either clear now or you may clear during your sleep um, because, you know, now your, your energy body and, and even your logic brain mm -hmm. has a, a recognition point to go back to. Right. right. All right. And Edward, Edward saying, I felt that part of my energy wanted to stand out bolts. My physical body stayed still. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that That's quite common, Edward. Um, it's like your higher self's like, here, let's go. <laughs> and your physical body's like, uh, no, she told me to sit. <laughs> <laughs> Under a face is warm and flushed. Yeah, you should have seen me earlier today when I channeled a message. I got all pink and I had to take my sweater off. <laughs> mm -hmm. and that was a good message. And, and Neshi even uh, needed to so, kind of move over a little. <laughs> there was a radiating heat there. Yeah. Brenda, it says very Zen yawning a lot. Uh, not no feeling of my body. Yes. Um, the yawning a lot we talked about earlier um, in the chakra sessions as well. Um, yawning is um, opening your, your throat and your heart so that you can um, take in more life force energy. So it's, it's really a clearing. Um, so yawning is not necessarily about tired. It's about that oxygen life force energy and having more room for it. Yeah. And didn't we say something about the yawns could actually be also an opening? Mm hmm yeah, it's an opening to allow spirit to slide in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. We were talking about drums at the time, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, now that we've been through the, the meditation, yeah. and there is a part of us, um, our soul, that remembers now our conscious mind, mm -hmm. is also in the having the opportunity to remember. And my suggestion is to, to really see how the evening goes for you and mm -hmm. your dream time. Yeah. Right? What could they possibly expect? Um, you know, people do it differently. Um, I'm somebody who, um, when I have this kind of expansion energy, 
Um, I feel like I'm put down <laughs> for a nap. Um, and by that, it, it almost feels like I'm under anesthesia where I sleep really heavily, really deeply um, and very vivid, lucid dreaming where I get a lot of information, a lot of messages because you got out of your own way for a little bit and now your team can slide in. Um, other people, you know, we are talking about the re-entry energy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you may have a little restlessness during the sleep time, but know that's you shaking off um, mm -hmm. that denser energy that um, now you're, you're aware of it um, and want to get back to a fuller sense. Mm -hmm. So you may start shaking that stuff off. Yeah. Um, drink a lot of water um, because, you know, even with a plane ride, right? You get dehydrated. And we're saying this because I am terrible at this. <laughs> I was even trying to figure out a way to create like holsters for <laughs> water bottles um, because I put it down and don't ever remember where I put it. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> we got very giggly about it yes, before the show. Did. It was one of those, it was just one of those things. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Julie, Julie's got a question. How often can we repeat this meditation for more results? Weekly, once a month, how often? So let me listen to my team for a second. I'm hearing about every three days. Because mm -hmm. um, um, with a lot of the healing meditation work that my team does, it's a three to seven day um, at three days, you can ask yourself or ask your team whether you're ready to do it again. Mm -hmm. um, and you can always use a pendulum for that. You can muscle, um, test. muscle test to see. Um, and, you know, just go with your gut on that one. But I, I'm hearing, you know, um, that you could do it in a three day cycle. That's good. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the kinesiology, right? Um, if you don't have somebody to help you do the muscle testing, you know how to do that with your, your own fingers, right? It's kind of hard to show it on camera. Mm -hmm. You know, the pinky. I use my pinky because most a lot of people use their ring finger. Yeah. But, yeah they do it that way, but I use my pinky. Yeah, it, it's, a little, it's a little hard to read that way. I also, um, I use my body as a pendulum, so I close my eyes and I get centered. And then I ask my body what means yes, which for me is a lean forward and what my body means no, and it's back. And so I just close my eyes and I'm like, how often can I repeat this meditation? Now, I don't want to say this out loud because I'm sure I could probably do it more often um, <laughs> because I'm in this vibration already because I do it all the time. Every client, <laughs> every client, every class. So I, I probably can do it every day without it really um, impacting me. But I would say the majority of the um, listeners um, for three days. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. And I, I have a question. Sure. Because, you know, um, that mental mind is always curious, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. The curiosity. And it's just like kind of like past lives when when we were really healing our past lives you remember the, the that time frame mm -hmm. um and we really wanted to know everything about you know the names the gender what we wore we needed to have the minutia right mm -hmm. so in the multi-dimensional being when we're consciously aware of it does it really matter how many dimensions we access and which ones no no, it's um, for me, um, I go where I'm needed. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, clients will ask me different things. Um, I know that certain work um, when I'm doing um, certain types of intense healing work, that there are certain dimensions that it's easier in. Um, so I will take the client up there with me or over there with me. Um, so when when that's occurring, um, you know, I might have an awareness there. But in general, it is much more likely that I am going to be in a place of 
Um, let's go wherever it's needed. Um, and I find that the people who get really focused on the number, um, they're in their ego. So they're actually limiting the access that they have. Right. Right. Because we're spending so much time in our head and our, our mental thoughts and trying to figure that out rather than just allowing it to be. Right. And, and, and if you think of the dimension doesn't just go upwards, it goes outwards, mm -hmm. you know, so are you, you know, seventh dimension up? Are you, you three dimensions sideways? Like, um, it's kind of like a, uh, uh, like that elevator on Willy Wonka. Oh yeah. Where sometimes it went diagonal and sometimes it went sideways and sometimes or, or it went the, up. Or the stairwells in Harry Potter. Harry Potter, yeah. Yeah, so when that's happening, um, you know, I don't worry too much about the number. Um, but I do know that a number of people, um, that helps them as bookmarks. Mm -hmm. That's what my team wants to call it. Sometimes it helps to bookmark that this energy is the fifth and this energy is the high fourth or the middle fourth mm -hmm. um, or the low fourth. Um, and this this energy is the seventh. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep, it does. Um, I was just trying to get a link for everybody here. Let's see. We'll do, I think we'll do that one. All right. Um, <clears throat> okay. So as we're heading up to the top of the hour, I really don't want a Vader. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> a a walk of Vader. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. <laughs> we'll put that up there. Why not? <laughs> yes. Because we really are. We'll have to make up a name for the, because it's not, it's not a, you know, some people think it's like a straight stairway up. Yeah. Um, but then you're missing all the ex expanded energy in all. You're missing being a sphere if you just go up and down a ladder. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so I like to be in a sphere because I can go side to side and up right. and down and around easier. Yeah. Yeah. So I like the long. <laughs> the long <laughs> so, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed um, this you know, the truth about being a multidimensional being, we did two hours, two hours of information. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, if you have any questions or anything like that, comments, please drop them in and we'll check back and see if there's anything that we need to pay attention to for you guys. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you guys being here with us. Yeah. Um, but I do want to share one thing with you guys because I haven't had a chance to do that. We've been so busy. I know. Um, is... You know that on the 10th, we publish the Star Nations magazine every month. And the October issue is out. This is the cover. I'm going to give it a solo because it's so pretty. Um, yeah, this is actually Estes, Estes Park Lake. Um, the photo was taken by one of our community members and a show host and contributing writer, uh, Patricia Heredia. And so this is the October issue. I think you guys are really, really going to like it because there's a lot of good stuff in this one. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I'm partial. <laughs> I know I'm partial. Um, let's see if we can a little bit closer. Get into the frame. Get into the frame. Let's see where we can put this down. I'll way. go this way. There we are. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm going to put the... Um, the link in for um, May Cloud, which is our partners, um, that you can get the magazine in print on demand, PDF, and web viewer. And you know what that means? The web viewer and PDF, you can see it on any device. Any device. Any device. Um, so if you like to have it as a like it like an ebook kind of situation, you can do that. <clears throat> so. You guys are, you're so welcome. Andrea is saying, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're so welcome. welcome. And Lisa is saying, this was extraordinary. Love and appreciate you both so much. Aw, thank, thank you, Lisa. You. Yeah, and you're welcome, Jocelyn. Yeah. All right. And so um, Thursday night, Thursday night, um, over at Star Nations Academy, closed group, closed yep. group is the monthly free mini um, class that I'll be teaching. We're just going to be talking about space clearing. One of my favorite uh, topics to do. Mm -hmm. You know, last night when I was I was writing up the description for it, I realized I've got 45 years of space clearing experience. 
Just, just a little bit. <laughs> Who, knew? <laughs> Who knew? So we're going to cover some basics for you guys yeah. in that mini class on Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Now, Soul Connections would normally be on Wednesday night, tomorrow night, um, but that's not going to be possible because this lady is going to be just be returning home at that time. I'm hoping to be on the ground at home and not still in the air, um, but I'm not going to broadcast from my car. It, it's just not, it's not happening. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, every so often my team sneaks in and wants to do something. So, so, you know, there may be maybe some live Facebook. Oh, she might sharing. do a live stream. I might do a live stream. Feeling it. Can you imagine Polly Jo LeBay doing a, a quick live stream for us from the airport saying, this is where I'm at. And I was teasing her. I said, where is Polly Jo LeBay now? <laughs> Not which airport. And maybe we should do that over the next couple of weeks because I've already been in Maine, Wisconsin, and Illinois, so mm -hmm. and Massachusetts and Connecticut. <laughs> so I've been in five states already. This month. This month. I'm pretty much doing the same ones again, though. I'll go through Baltimore to get to uh, Milwaukee, to get to Illinois, to Chicago. <laughs> so you never know. You where, never know where, where I'm going to be. Joe is going to pop. This up. hair has <laughs> me traveling. I, I'm certain that's what it is. The galaxy hair. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and next week, next week Tuesday, you can catch communications from home on Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So with yeah. that, Bama Mina. You know what that means in Potawatomi, right? Until we see each other again. Love yeah. you guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Good night. Good night.